This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Zakaria says, Yari Sunni, he will inherit from me. Meaning this child that you will grant me, he will inherit from me. Inherit what from me? My wealth? My property? No. Knowledge. Because the prophets, what inheritance do they leave behind? It is of knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed, the scholars are the heirs of the prophets. And the prophets do not leave behind them dinar nor dirham. They don't leave behind themselves money as inheritance. They leave only knowledge behind as inheritance. So whosoever acquires it, acquires a huge fortune. Whosoever acquires knowledge of the deen, he has acquired a huge fortune. It's like as though someone has inherited a lot of money. The Prophet ﷺ also said that we, meaning the Prophets, do not leave behind inheritance of wealth. Whatever we do leave behind, it is charity. So, Yarithuni, he will inherit me, meaning knowledge, prophethood. وَيَرِسُ And he will also inherit مِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبَ From the family of Ya'qub Meaning the Bani Israel. In other words, the legacy, the knowledge, the prophethood that has been in the Bani Israel, my son should be able to continue with that. He should be the recipient of that. وَجَعَلْهُ And O oh Allah make him Rabbi, O oh my Lord, Rabiya, One that is pleasing. Pleasing to who? Pleasing to you. Because what's the benefit of a child whom perhaps the parents love a lot, but he is disobedient to Allah? He is not pleasing to Allah. So, وَجَعَلْهُ رَبِّي رَضِيَّ Oh Allah, make him radi. The word radi is from the root letters ra, bad, ya. You will notice all of these words at the end of these ayat. Shaqi, radi. These words, they're Ism Sifa Mushabbaha. Ism Sifa Mushabbaha. And they give the meaning of Fa'il, and sometimes they also give the meaning of Maf'ul. Sometimes they give the meaning of Fa'il, and sometimes Maf'ul. So Radi gives the meaning of Radi, and it also gives the meaning of Mardi. It gives meaning of Radi as well as Mardi. Who is Radi? One who is pleased, one who is happy, one who is satisfied. So make him one who is pleased and happy with your decisions, with your commands, with your decree. One who accepts your decisions. One who accepts your commands. And secondly, radi also gives the meaning of mardi. Meaning, one who is pleasing, one who is acceptable to you. That you are happy with him. That you are well pleased with him. What do we see in these ayat? The love that Zakaria had for the deen of Allah, for the religion of Allah. That he loved it so much that even when he wants a child, he wants that that child should be dedicated to the deen. Generally people want children for who? For themselves. Right? That we can have a family. Somebody can take our name forward. Somebody whom we can be proud of. My son is a doctor. My son is an engineer. My son is so and so. My daughter is so beautiful. She is so successful. This is why generally people want to have children. Tafakhur. To boast. To show off. Al-malu wal-banuna. Zinatul hayatul dunya. For the purpose of zina. However, we see that he wants a child to serve the deen. To work for the deen. To carry this mission forward. And the thing is that a person only likes for his children what he likes for himself and what he likes a lot. Isn't it so? What will you give to your child? Something that you really like. Sometimes it is amazing how parents will give that food to their children which is the very best. They will eat the rice and they will give, for example, the meat or the fun part to the child. Why? So the child can eat just something, anything. They will sacrifice themselves but they will give the very best to their children. Because a person is extremely sincere to his children. And anything that he offers to his children, that is what he loves the most. 
So when Zakaria a.s. wants the deen for his son, this shows that he loves the deen. This shows that he loves the deen. And if a person claims to be religious, and he considers himself to be a mu'min, but he does not care about the deen of his children, he does not care about whether his children are interested in the deen or not, whether they serve the deen or not, he's not concerned about that, then this shows his lack of commitment to the deen. This shows his lack of love for the deen. Because someone who truly loves the deen wants that his children should serve the deen. And if he sees his children busy in other things, they're not concerned about the deen at all, this shows that this person does not really care much about the deen. No matter how much he says, no matter what he does, whatever you dedicate your children to, that is what you give priority to. That is what you love. So many times we see parents, they will dedicate so many hours, they will spend so much money, so much energy in making sure the children become successful students with good knowledge, with a good career. Why? Because that is what is important to them. So if the deen is important to you, you will make sure that your children will have it. Ya Zakariya. So we see that Zakariya a.s. He is very sincere in his dua and he is very hopeful as well. And the reason why he wants a child is to serve the deen of Allah. And what is the promise of Allah? That in tansur Allah, yansurkum. If you help Allah, He will also help you. He wants to help the deen of Allah. So Allah also responded to his dua. Ya Zakariya, O Zakariya, inna nubashiruka, indeed we give you good news, bi ghulamin of a boy. Meaning you will have a boy. We give you good news that you will have a boy. And Ismuhu, his name is going to be Yahya. This is beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named the child himself. And he told Zakariya alayhi salam, before even a child was born to him, that you're going to have a child whose name is going to be Yahya. Ismuhu Yahya. Inna nubashiruka bi ghulamin, ismuhu Yahya. Lam naj'al, we did not assign lahu for him min qablu from before Samiyan a namesake. Who is Sami? Sami is from the word ism. And ism is name. And Sami is sharik fil ism. Meaning someone who has the same name as yours. Someone who has the same name as yours. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ سَمِيًّا There is no one who has ever had this name before. So many times, parents are looking for such names that are unique, that they have not heard of before, that nobody has ever heard of before. That is not a common name. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifts Zakariya alayhi salam a child, but a child whose name is also unique, that no one has ever had that name before. Sami is also someone who is similar to the other in their attributes in their character in their qualities so lam naj'al lahu min qablu samiyya that this child is going to be extremely unique there is no one who is going to be like him how in what way in his qualities in his characteristics it is said that yahya alayhi salam was given prophethood at an extremely young age generally Prophethood is given at what time? At around 40. But Yahya a.s. was given prophethood at an extremely young age. So there is no one else who is like him. He is very unique. So we see that the dua of Zakariya a.s. was answered exactly as he had requested. In Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 39, we learn, فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّي فِي الْمِحْرَابِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكَ بِيَحْيَا مُصَدِّقًا بِكَلِمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَسَيِّدًا وَحَصُورًا وَنَبِيًّا مِّنَ الصَّالِحِينَ So the angels called him while he was standing in prayer in the chamber. What do we learn? That exactly where he was making dua. There Allah responded to the dua. And the angel said, Indeed Allah gives you good tidings of Yahya. Confirming a word from Allah and who will be honorable. So what are his characteristics? That he will be honorable. He will be abstaining. He will not indulge in the things in the adornment of this dunya. And a prophet from among the righteous. 
So Zakariya is given this good news. Now what is the reaction of Zakariya a.s.? Qala, he says, Rabbi, anna yakunu li ghulam. How can I have a child? It's amazing. He was making a dua for zurriyatan tayyibah. For a wali. And now when he's told you're going to have a child, he says, how? So anna does not mean it's not possible, but it expresses surprise and amazement. That really? How is it going to be? Anna yakunu li ghulam. How is it going to be? How am I going to have a child? وَكَانَتِ امْرَأَتِ عَاقِرًا And my wife is barren. وَقَدْ بَلَغْتُ And I have in fact reached مِنَ الْكِبْرِ From old age عِتِيَّةِ Extreme. I have reached an extreme in old age. عِتِيَّةِ عِتِيَّةِ is from the root letters. عِنْتَ Well. And عَتَى يَعْتُ عُتُو Is to disobey. But it's such disobedience, literally, that is due to kibr, that is due to arrogance. And from that, it gives the meaning of exceeding limits, going to an extreme. So, وَقَدْ بَلَغْتُ مِنَ الْكِبَرِ عِتِيَّةِ Meaning, I have reached an extreme in old age. I have reached extreme old age. Such that my limbs have become weak. My abilities are beyond my power. You see, extreme old age is when a person does not even have power over himself. That he wants to use his hands, but he's unable to. He wants to go upstairs, but he's unable to. He wants to do all that work, but he's unable to. This is what itih is. So this is how old I have become. Qala, he said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to him, Kadalika, likewise. Or the angel responded to him on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because angels, they communicate. So qala, kadalika, likewise. Meaning, this is Exactly what's going to happen. You are going to have a child. You are going to have a son. And you will have a son in the same setting. You and your wife being extremely old. It's not that you will become very young or that your wife will become very young. No. You will remain as you are and she will remain as she is. In the same setting, you're going to have a child. Because قَالَ رَبُّكَ your Lord has said, "Hua alayya hayinun." It is easy upon me. What is easy upon me? Giving you a child in this age of yours, giving you a child while you have become extremely old. This is hayin. What does hayin mean? Something that is extremely simple and insignificant, very easy for someone to do. It's not that difficult. It's very very easy for them to do. And hayyan in particular is used for such an action that is very easy for someone to do because it is very small compared to the power that they possess. Do you understand? It's very small compared to the power that they possess. So it's extremely simple for them. Very, very easy for them. Like for example, if I tell you to hold an empty plastic bag, is it difficult for you? No. No. It's very small, the weight, compared to your capability, your ability to carry objects. So, this is extremely easy for me, giving you a child when you have become old, because, وَقَدْ خَلَقْتُ While in fact, I created you, مِنْ قَبْلُ From before, وَلَمْ تَكُ شَيْئًا And you were nothing. وَزَكَرِيَا I also created you, and you were nothing. So, if that is possible for me, Giving you a child when you have become old is not difficult for me at all. Because nothing at all is difficult for him. Everything is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is possible for him. He just says, kun, and it happens. So if a person wants anything fulfilled, what does he need to do? Call upon Allah. Trust upon Allah. Now Zakaria alayhi salam, obviously, he was excited. And if somebody is told that they're going to have a child, they want to know exactly when. Or they want to know, for example, if a couple is trying to have a child, they want to know as soon as possible when the wife is pregnant. So he says, قَالَ رَبِّ جَعَلْ O my Lord, you make, leave for me, ayatan a sign. Give me a sign. A sign that will tell me that my wife has conceived. So that I can thank you for it from that moment on. This is not because Zakaria doubted. 
that what if I don't have a child? This is because he wanted to be satisfied in his heart. Just like Ibrahim alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَئِنَّ قَلْبِي Just so that my heart is at peace. I can be satisfied. I can be content and happy. And I can begin to thank you from that moment on. So give me a sign. Make for me a sign that my wife has conceived. Now, typically, what happens? You just go to the doctor or you take a pregnancy test and you know. Right? But we see that at that time, obviously, there were no pregnancy tests. Similarly, a woman can figure out she's expecting if she misses her period. But we see that she was extremely old, so that was also not possible. Now what's the other way? That they wait a few months until eventually her stomach begins to grow and she feels the movement of the baby, and even that sometimes happens very late. right? So imagine if he would have to wait all that time. He's waiting. This is something that he wanted really badly. So this is why he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a sign. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala ayatuka that your sign is Allah to kalima that you shall not speak an nasa to the people. You will not be able to talk to the people. And the moment when you're not able to talk to the people, know that your wife has conceived. But for how long you will not be able to talk to people? Salasalayalin for three nights. Three nights. And over here nights are mentioned, but remember that the nights it also includes the days. Where do we learn that from? In Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 41. Where it is mentioned, قَالَ آيَاتُكَ أَلَّا تُكَلِّمَ النَّاسَ ثَلَاثَ أَيَّامٍ Over there, ayam are mentioned, and over here, layal are mentioned. So what does it show? That three days and three nights. Three 24-hour cycles. So for this long, you will not be able to talk to the people. سَوِيًّا while being sound. Meaning, in your body, Physically, you will be completely sound. You will be perfect. You will have no disability. Generally, people are unable to talk when? If they have some physical problem or disease or an illness. So it's not that you will be suffering from some disease, some sickness, some illness, because of which you will be unable to speak. Similarly, sometimes people are unable to talk because of extreme shock, because of some mental instability, some emotional instability some shock or fear, they're unable to speak. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sawi, you will be completely sawi in your body, completely sound, it's not going to be some disability, some problem. And sawi, as you know, is from sawa, sawa, we did yesterday. What does it mean? When something is equal, when something is sound, when something is proper, as it should be. And rajulun sawi, is a person who is free from any ayb, any deficiency, any fault, any extremes in his physique, in his physical appearance. Like when a person is not extremely tall, not extremely short, that it's a perfectly balanced body. This is what sawi is. That there's no disability. And in particular it has to do with disability, not just with extremes in the physique, but like for example, one eye does not function properly. Or a person is unable to speak properly. A person is not able to move his hands properly. But so we is who? Someone who is safe and sound from any of these disabilities, any of these extremes. Some have said that layal in sawiyya, what this means is that for three nights that are sound, meaning that are uninterrupted, consecutively. Layal in sawiyya, meaning three nights consecutively, you will not be able to talk to people. Now we see that the sign that he has granted, it's very amazing. Isn't it? That there is going to be nothing wrong with his body, but still he will be unable to talk. In order to speak properly, the teeth have to be there, the tongue has to be there, the throat, everything has to be functioning properly. And when everything is functioning properly, there is no reason that a person should not be able to speak. Isn't it so? Logically, technically, he should be able to talk. But we see that despite the fact that everything is perfectly fine, still he will be unable to talk. On the other hand, he was going to have a child. And he was going to have a child when physically it was not possible. 
Think about it. He was old, she was old. Physically, it does not make sense for them to have a child. Right? So exact opposite things were happening. Where the mouth is completely fine, he cannot talk. Where the body is extremely weak, it's producing a child. What does it show? That ultimately, all power is with who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For something to not function, despite being physically okay, it's in the hands of Allah. The power is with Allah. And for something to work out, for something to function, despite being physically disabled, physically weak, physically incapable, again, who has a power? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَخَرَجَ So he came out. Zakaria alayhi salam came out. عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ Upon his people. He came before his people. مِنَ الْمِحْرَابِ From the prayer chamber. We have done the word mihrab. Mihrab is used for the place. It's a small room. It's a small chamber, a private chamber, a masjid where a person worships, a prayer niche. So he came out from the mihrab. فَأَوْحَى And then he signaled. Remember the word awha, wahi. Wahi is to communicate secretly, quickly, quietly. And over here, wahi gives the meaning of ishara. Signaling with a gesture, without uttering a sound. Like for example, if you don't want to say something and you just want to signal, you just want to get something across to the other person, what will you use? Your eyes or your hands. Like for example, if you want somebody to be quiet, instead of saying be quiet, what will you do? You will put your fingers on your lips. right? If you want somebody to move, instead of telling them to move, you can move your hand pointing towards the door. So similarly, he also signaled to the people somehow, and فَأَوْحَى إِلَيْهِمْ and what did he signal to them? And subbihu that you glorify, that you exalt Allah, you do the tasbih of Allah when Bukratan in morning wa ashiya and also in evening. Bukra is morning. It is said that it's the time from sunrise until midday. And ashiya is the evening. It is said that it's the time from the time of Zawal, midday until the next morning. So you understand? Bukra is from sunrise until the time of Zuhr almost, from when the sun begins to decline. And Ashi is from when the sun begins to decline until the next morning, so the entire evening. So he says, do the speech of Allah morning and evening at the two ends of the day or the whole time. How did he communicate to them? How did he gesture? Allahu A'lam. You know how sometimes if you're doing the speech after salah, and you're using your fingers, and uh, somebody also is sitting next to you, and they're not doing the speech. You don't want to say anything. What do you do? You just point with your hand, like you also do the same. So Allah Wardam, He must have some way through which He communicated to them. It is mentioned in some narrations that the people had been waiting for Zakaria alayhi salam to open the prayer chamber, so that they could go in in order to perform their prayers. And they came to the door and they knocked. And Zakaria alayhi salam, he came out and he wished to speak to them, but he was unable to. So that told him, that yes, this is a sign. And he signaled to them that you do the speech of Allah morning and evening. Now we see that Zakaria alayhi salam himself was engaged in the worship of Allah. Right? He was in the mihrab. And he also told the people to do the speech of Allah. Why? Because something amazing was going to happen very soon. A child was going to be born to an extremely old couple. And this was something amazing. It was something miraculous. It was a special gift of Allah. And because it was a special gift of Allah, therefore, instead of spending that time in, uh, in having baby showers and getting overexcited and partying, and they're busy doing the tasbih of Allah. Because a child is what? A gift of Allah. And at that time, we should be thanking Allah. I'm not saying we should not be celebrating the happiness with other people. Of course, this is why we have the aqiqah. Right? But the point is that at these times, we should not forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about it. Having a child is such a blessing. Such a blessing. People, they will talk to their friends, they will talk to their family members, they will share everything with them. But when it comes to thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unfortunately... Many people neglect that part. Many times we neglect that part. Allah is the one who is giving that gift. So Zakaria 
he tells the people as well that they should do the speech of Allah. Also we see that a person should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times, but especially when a special favor is being given to a person. Especially when a gift is being bestowed upon a person. Whether it is knowledge, or it is a child, or it is wealth, or it is any kind of blessing that a person is given, at that time especially, what should a person do? He should busy himself in glorifying Allah, in praising Him, in thanking Him. Because gratitude, what does that lead to? Increase and security of blessings. We also see that when a person is unable to speak, and it could be because of different reasons, for example, a sore throat, a throat infection. If a person is unable to speak, what happens generally? People are trying to communicate with him. But it's very frustrating. Why? Because you say something to the other person and he cannot talk back. Sometimes he will write. But even that becomes extremely difficult. So at that time, instead of just sitting in silence, staring at one another, getting upset, getting frustrated, or getting frustrated with yourself, I cannot talk, this is not fair, why did this happen to me? What should a person do? What should a person do? Busy himself in the dhikr of Allah. Because our tongues are used a lot for talking about other things. And perhaps when Allah has taken that ability to talk away from you for some time, it's so that you can do more tasbih of Allah. Also we see that Zakaria a.s. perhaps he would address the people because he was a leader, he was a religious leader. Perhaps he would lead the people in prayer. Perhaps he would address them and give khutbah, etc. But for three nights and three days, he was not going to be able to talk. So what should the rest of the people do? Take a break? Have fun? Enjoy life? What does he say? Don't waste your time, do this beer. So similarly, if we're ever waiting in class, for the class to begin, if we are waiting for the teacher to come or something like that, instead of walking around, instead of using those moments to talk about things that are not as necessary, what should we do? Use such moments in the dhikr of Allah. Because you see, life is made of moments. It's made of seconds. It's made of minutes and hours and days. Isn't it so? And if we waste five minutes here, two minutes there, ten minutes here, three minutes here, if you add it all up, it amounts to a lot of time. And the day of judgment is Yawmul Hasra. It's the day of regret. Every person is going to regret on that day. That I sat there just staring into nothing with my mouth shut. I could have done the dhikr of Allah. I could have said some tasbih. I could have done some istighfar. I could have done some hamd of Allah. And I could have gained so much reward. Alhamdulillah. Tamla ul mizan. It fills the scale. But unfortunately, so many moments go by when we are just silent, we're not doing anything, we're not listening to anything, we're not working on anything. Those moments just fly away. Sometimes waiting outside the doctor's office. Sometimes waiting for somebody to come, for somebody to call. Use these moments. I remember once, I was very small, I was playing this game, puzzle, and uh, as I was using my fingers, it was taking me very long to figure it out. When my mother saw me doing that, she said, every time you move a piece, say Alhamdulillah. Because so much time was going in figuring out that puzzle, 15, 20, 30 minutes, and she would see me every now and then busy with that thing. So she said to me, every time you move a piece, say Alhamdulillah. Because these moments should not go waste. How difficult is it to say Alhamdulillah at that time? It's not difficult at all. So he tells the people, do tasbih of Allah morning and evening. So in this is a big lesson for us that just because we are unable to do something, it doesn't mean we don't do anything. It means we use those moments to do the dhikr of Allah. Because the dhikr of Allah is extremely heavy in the mizan. So the child was born. Listen to the recitation of all of these ayats from the beginning. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم باي مسلم سنترو 
please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com.